Hello, everybody. It's Lady B. It is Sunday school time, and it's a new quarter. Now, you know what I told you? Let's make this bigger. You know what I told you? I'm like, we made it out of the last quarter, learning about Israel's successes and their failures. And unfortunately, we learned that Israel um, or Judah ended up in captivity because they never um, obeyed God. They didn't repent. And so God had to keep his word and judge them because he is a just God. But praise be to God, we're in this new quarter and we're going to be talking about life in Jesus Christ. There is no better life than the life that we have in Christ Jesus. There is no greater joy. There is no greater peace than being in Jesus Christ. And we're going to be in Philippians chapter one. And I am excited about this chapter. Unfortunately, we don't deal with all the verses because, you know, like in Philippians chapter one, verse six, where it talks about God is going to be faithful and complete the work that he started in us. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about that. I am excited that God is going to finish what he started in me. Do you ever feel like a failure? Do you ever feel like I just can't get things right and I keep messing up or whatever? I'm just striving so hard, but I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere. This is the beauty of being in Christ. You know, Jude said that he was going to keep us and that he was going to present us Faultless. And so one of the things I want to challenge us with as we go through this quarter, dealing with this life that we have in Christ, that we allow God to change our minds, to adjust our thinking for us to really, you know, I'm about to date myself now, take the Nestle plunge. When I was younger, they had this commercial for Nestle tea and um, nest tea and you know you would drink the tea and it was like you were falling backward into a pool of water to cool you off I would like for us to just take that plunge and just drink in Christ's joy and his peace and his and his rest and everything and let him do the work let Ours is to have the desire. And we're going to learn about that with Paul in today. Ours is to have the desire. And it's his job to bring us where he desires for us to be. So what am I saying, really, as we get into this lesson? When we become new creatures in Christ, let's make it easy. When we accept Christ as our Savior, then we submit to his work. Let him do it. And then all the other stuff that comes with life and, and Christianity and everything, it becomes easier because we're looking to him, the author and the finisher of our faith. It is not about me and it's not about you. So let's pray. And then we're going to get into this lesson. Father, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for this new quarter and this new season that you have blessed us to be in God. It's cold outside, but we're so glad that the Holy Spirit warms our hearts. You're such a good God. So be with us as we are together, as we fellowship and go through this lesson. We love you, Jesus, in your matchless name. Amen. All righty. So let's get into our lesson. So this quarter, we're going to be talking about um, living in Christ. And our very first lesson is to live in Christ. So we're going to be talking about not the old life, OK, but this new life, there's supposed to be um, at some point a fresh start. And in that fresh start, regardless of what is going on in our lives, because today we're going to be talking about Paul being in prison. But it doesn't matter the stuff. Everybody has 
stuff that's going on in their lives. You have stuff, I have stuff, but the stuff doesn't matter. The joy and the peace and the contentment, it doesn't come from the external, it's coming from the internal. And the internal is Christ through the Holy Spirit that gives me joy that doesn't get shifted because of dire circumstances. This joy is there no matter what. I wanna share this, you know, I love to share testimonies. Um, my husband and I, you know, we we do our best to give, not just just the the tithe and the offering thing, but really give, give to the Lord, give to other ministries and organizations, you know, th- to support those in, in so many different ways. We we ask God to, to show us, and we give, and we give, and we give. Well, just recently, um, some things were going on with my husband's paycheck, and felt my heart kind of palpitate a little bit. And I said, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back a little bit on our giving until this straightens itself out. And I felt a strong rebuke from the Lord. And so, you know what I did? I kept our giving at the same level. And you know what God did? He proved himself faithful. So what I want to say to you is, up here, let's get this. I, I align my mind and my heart to Christ that no matter what my situation is, he is in control and he's going to be my joy and he's going to be my peace and he's going to be my rest and he's going to be my contentment. These things are so important because as we discuss where Paul was in jail, the secret to him still being able to continue in ministry bound physically was what had happened in his heart, with hearts here, and in his mind. He had allowed a transformation to occur. He had fallen in love with Jesus, not his circumstances, not this life, but he had fallen in love with Jesus. So let's get into our lesson on today. We are, like I said, in a new quarter. This quarter is going to explore multiple aspects of the new life Christ gives us. So unit one is new life in Christ. Unit two is transformed lives in Christ. And unit three is lives worthy of Christ. I want you guys to keep hearing this. Christ, 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 Christ. Everything is Christ. It is in Christ that we live and we move and we have our being. Whenever we start to rely on ourselves, we run into trouble. But if we keep Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, if we keep him as the focus, we will succeed every time. Our golden text is, Paul says in Philippians 1.20, and nothing I shall be ashamed but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. So Paul, even in this text, and we're going to get into this again, but look at where Paul's focus is. Paul's focus is not what's going on with this external body, the material stuff, Paul is saying, I want this life that I'm living for Christ. I want it to count. I want to live my life in such a way that God is pleased, that God is glorified. And a lot of times we're spending a lot of time trying to get, um, keep ourselves safe. I know this. I, God has been dealing with me about that. You know, this, this, um, self-preservation thing, like making sure, you know, nobody's coming against me. Nobody's talking about me. Everybody likes me. That's, that's one of my weaknesses. I don't like when people are upset with me, but when you begin to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, you are guaranteed that somebody's not going to like you, that somebody is going to slander your name. And you know, we at in my, at my church, we had studied Revelation chapter two with the church of Smyrna and how he says to them, I know that they're slandering you and I'm telling you that you're going to go through persecution and I need you to be faithful unto death. And those scriptures really hit me because nobody likes to physically hurt. We don't like to emotionally hurt, but I'm learning. God is teaching me that I have to be okay with whatever comes with being faithful to Jesus Christ. 
That has to be my focus, not what happens to my physical body, but where my soul goes at the end. And when I stand before the one who loves me the most, who loves me the best, I want to hear well done. I want some stars in my crown that I cast before his feet, cast down at his feet. And I can't obtain that always trying to preserve myself. All right, so let's keep going into our lesson. So just a little history on the Apostle Paul who is um, writing our scriptures because we are going to be in Philippians and in Ephesians and in Colossians and in Philemon. We do take a pause um, December 24th and we'll be in John because, you know, we always acknowledge um, when we celebrate the birth of Christ. And so, but we will be in three of the letters that Paul wrote. So I wanted to give us a little history on Paul. So the Apostle Paul is one of the most influential leaders of the early Christian church. He played a crucial role in spreading the gospel to the Gentiles. During the first century and his missionary journeys took him all throughout the Roman Empire. Paul started more than a dozen churches and he's traditionally considered the author of 13 books of the Bible. And that would be in the New Testament. So the majority of the New Testament is believed that either Paul wrote it or he dictated it. More than any other biblical writer for this reason, St. Paul is often considered one of the most influential people in history. He had a greater impact on the world's religious landscape than any other person besides Jesus and perhaps Muhammad. But before he was known as a tireless champion of Christianity, Paul was actually known for persecuting Christians. The book of Acts tells us that Paul was even present at the death of the first Christian martyr, where he approved the stoning of Stephen. You will find that in Acts 8 and 1. And over the last two millennia, the 2000 years, countless books have been written about Paul and his teaching. Aren't you glad, aren't you glad that our past does not affect who, what God does through us? Aren't you glad that God can take whatever we were and make us new creatures in Christ? That's why we should be so excited when we talk about lessons about these lives in Christ. Because whatever we were, my sister uh, preached a message one time and she said we were all an ex something. But no matter what we were, remember were because I came to Christ. I'm a new creature now. And God can even take all of that stuff from my past and my sins and make me great for him. Aren't you glad about that? I know that I am. I'm so grateful to God. I'm so grateful to God that he can change us. Now, I wanted to share this with you also. And this is like a timeline of Paul's, his letters, epistles or letters and his journey. So he had three journeys. Uh, Galatian was the first book that Paul wrote. And so we see here after his third missionary journey, when he was arrested um, in Jerusalem and he was on his way to trial, okay? That was his first Roman imprisonment. And that's when he wrote Ephesians, Colossians, Philemon, excuse me, some people say Philemon and Philippians while he was in jail. We had an awesome time yesterday in service at my church. We are in the prayer event. I advertised it last time that my husband was speaking and he was talking about, he was talking to the man. Oh, it was, so, it, it just blesses me when I see men worshiping God and crying out to God and praying on their faces before God. And my husband was exhorting and encouraging the men. And he was talking about the times when he suffered and gone through emotional pain and so forth, and how he still had to find that quiet place in God and, and write his messages and so forth. And this is what we see here with Paul, that even though he is in jail, his concern is not him. His concern are the souls that he's reached and the souls that he will be able to reach. His focus was not Paul. His focus was Jesus. And that's the challenge for us. 
We are living in some crazy times. There's so much going on, so much going on. Oh God, so much going on. And if we're not careful, we will become self-consumed and we will be um, caught up in preserving ourselves. But oh, we want to be like Paul. That whatever state I'm in, I'm, I'm learned. I've learned to be content. I've learned to rejoice in God because I know He is in control. So this, look at this again. So and and if you you see here that the book of Acts, the historical book of the New Testament, is showing where in Acts some of these stories are told about Paul and his travels, where he was. So. At the end of Acts, we find him in house arrest. Okay, he was a house arrest at this point. We find him in house arrest and he's chained to a soldier, a Roman soldier, 24 7. And he writes to the Ephesian church, to the Colossians. He writes to Philemon, which is a personal letter, and he writes to Philippians. Okay, so today's aim is to demonstrate God's positive. Paul's positive attitude as he lived to please Christ. Paul kept the positive attitude as he lived to please Christ, even in jail. And the principle is to teach that there is joy in living the abundant life in Christ. And we have to get this, people of God. The abundant life is not about material possessions. The abundant life is not because I have a house and I have a car and I have a good wife or husband and, and children and, 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 and money, money, money in the bank. No, the abundant life is in Christ, the joy and the peace that he's given us. Matter of fact, I didn't have this scripture, but I want to read this because this just came to me. When we talk about this abundant life, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, chapter. Um, I want to read seven. I want to read seven. Um, I'm sorry, you all. I'm in First Corinthians. I was like, what in the world? I want to read this because this really blesses me and actually puts things in perspective. I'm going to read, start reading in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and I'm going to read verses 16 through 18. And I'll tell you what, let me put this up here. And I usually don't do this, but I want to, um, I want to, um, I feel led to, to do this. I just need, a, that's all I need. Thank you, ma'am. All right, so we're going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and we're going to start um, at verse 16. We're going to start at verse 16, and then we're going to read all the way to chapter 7, verse 1. Okay, and then let me show this so you'll see where we are. I want to read this, and I pray that this encourages someone. Second Corinthians chapter 16, Paul says, and what agreement have the temple of God with idols for ye are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Now, this is what the abundant life is. This relationship that we have with God. Look at what he says. I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Here we go. Abundant life, God has received us. We are in relationship with him, and will be a father unto you. I want you to think about that. Fathers protect, fathers provide, Father's lead. So even if I don't have all of this money in the bank and I don't have this, and I keep talking about the material things because a lot of times when we go to church, all we hear is about the material things. That's all we hear about. Not 
just he's going to provide according to his riches and glory. But look at what he said. I will be your father. He's not saying I'm going to make you rich. He said, I'm going to be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord. I don't know about you, but one day my dad didn't get anything else right. He provided for his family. So if God is my father, what I need, I always have. Well, you don't know because I'm struggling financially. Listen, we all go through those seasons, but I'm here to tell you, I, when the writer in Psalm said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. I'm here to tell you that has been the truth not just for me, but all the people that I'm even in a relationship, they have continued to testify that God has been faithful. So he said, I will be a father unto them and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Now, here we go. Having therefore these promises, whoo, I'm going to be your father and you're going to be my sons and daughters. Having these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Oh, I love that scripture. So here we have here, when we talk about this abundance. When we talk about this abundance, why are where is the abundance coming from? The abundance is coming from being in relationship with the Father through Jesus Christ. And if we stay in relationship with Jesus Christ, we I'm, I know I'm fast forwarding and I'm all over Philippians, but it's hard not to be. Paul said, I have learned to be content. Why? Because my God is going to supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So that, this is why I can be in jail and be okay and stay focused on ministry and not licking my wounds. So get back to the lesson, ma'am, to encourage students to emulate Paul's outlook and way of life through the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit. Paul couldn't do this by himself. He was doing it by the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is what we need. If we will hold on to Christ, everything that we need, it'll be there. You all can tell I'm enjoying myself, right? So lesson at a glance, we do not always get to choose the circumstances of our lives, but we can choose what our response to our circumstances is going to be. What do you choose? What do you choose? That's the question on the table right now. What do you choose? When Paul wrote Philippians, he was in a very negative circumstance. Matter of fact, he was in jail. His life in Christ, however, allowed him to view those circumstances in a very positive way. Although Paul was in prison, he maintained an attitude of joy. He continued to be a witness for Christ and looked forward to a continuing ministry. He um, And he lived above his circumstances. I want to show us this picture. This is a depiction of Paul teaching. And I think about how in our churches, we don't go to churches that they're not suited for what we like and, 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 and what we want and so forth. But look at this picture. When you want Christ, we don't care what the place, the gathering place is. It may be in someone's living room. It may be in somebody's garage. It may be at the coffee shop. Now, I know somebody that started a church at a brewery. I'm not recommending the brewery because some people are not free from the drink. Some people are not free from the drink. So I do not, I do not recommend I do not recommend the brewery, but I want look at how the people, they were just glad to hear the word. And that's what God is calling us to, that our hearts, we are learning to be content wherever we are. Remember, we have this new life in Christ, this new life in Christ. So let's get into our scripture. The first part um, of our lesson outline is putting Christ's cause before comfort. So Paul says, now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. 
No, no licking wounds, no crying, no pity. Paul said, you know what? This is benefiting the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole place, I mean, ballast guard, and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. So everybody knows why I'm in jail. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. Paul is saying that people are observing what I'm going through and it's giving them boldness. My husband shared some very intimate things with the men yesterday at the prayer event. And I watched the countenance of those men change in such an awesome way to say, if, if pastor could go through that and be faithful to God, I can do it too. And this is what's happening with Paul. Paul is showing the people how it's done. Yes, I'm in jail, jail. Yes, my freedoms have been taken from me. However, comma, that does not bind the gospel. I can still share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Paul's attitude motivated others to be willing to endure for the cause of the gospel. That's what we see here. And then the next part of our scripture, putting Christ's purpose before pride. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I'm in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Do you all see Paul's humility and Paul's focus? I have to be honest with you. This is one of the things I'm getting better. But, you know, before I got saved, I was a fighter. But you can't tell with this feisty personality that I am. And so now I have to every day remind myself this is not your battle. This is not your battle. And even though these people, even though they were doing things to come against Paul, Paul said, you know, the way I see it, they're still talking about Jesus. And in there talking about Jesus, whether they're trying to slander me or not, it's piquing somebody's curiosity and causing someone to want to know about this Christ, causing someone to want to know about this Paul who's in jail for Christ. He didn't steal. He didn't murder. He didn't come against the king. So who is this Christ? And an open door to share the gospel is an open door to share the gospel. And that's what we have to be like, we have to be like Paul, that even if God allows us to get sick and we're laying in the hospital, God, who do you want me to minister to while I'm in in jail. I'm standing in the, I'm in the hospital. I'm standing in a long line at the grocery store. Instead of getting impatient, God, who do you want me to share your glory with in the grocery store? That's the attitude. And that's why this is entitled putting Christ's purpose before pride. No, we don't like to be slandered and talked about and, and all of those things. But listen, Paul realized it wasn't about him. It was about Christ. And he realized he was a leader and the people were watching him. Leaders, the people are watching you. They're watching how you deal with crisis. They're watching how you deal with, with failures or whatever it is. They are watching. And we want to always live lives that are pointing people back to Jesus Christ. So remember, again, we are talking about this new life in Christ. The old has gone and the new has come. And even in dire circumstances, we can exhibit, exhibit Christ, the same Christ that went on the cross and was able to say, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. We can have that mind also just like Christ. And you know, it's a choice. We have to choose to be like Christ. And then finally putting Christ's duty before desire. For I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. So Paul believed 
that through the prayers and the work of the Holy Spirit, that he was going to be released from jail. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. Paul is saying, whether I let, get let go or whatever, I just want God to be glorified with my life. Are you saying that even in the midst of whatever troubles you're having, God, get the glory. Some of us have gone through divorce. Some of us have gone through sickness. Some of us, there are things, unfortunately, that have fallen to you even at church or whatever. But is that our desire? God, get the glory. So then he says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. It's to my benefit. I, I, you know, going home to be with the Lord would be a wonderful thing. But while I'm here, my focus, my desire, my drive is going to be Jesus Christ. For I am, if I am going to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet, what shall I choose? I do not know. You know, as long as I'm here, I get to share the gospel and people get saved. You know, what should I choose? I'm torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Do you see Christ? I'm an Oh, do you see Paul even in jail thinking about the ministry, his call, the souls? That's what Christ is calling us to. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain. In other words, I know it's not time for me to die. And I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith so that through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of of me. So look again, he's not taking the credit for anything. So by me being with you, you're going to grow in Christ and more people are going to be saved. He said, I'm convinced of this. I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and join the faith so that through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. So in other words, when this prayer is answered and I am set free, your, your faith is going to increase. You're going to be more apt and more excited and more willing and more committed to Jesus Christ. And in that, Paul said, I'm willing to stay. This is what God is calling all of us to. We are all being called, as James said, to submit ourselves to God. God, here I am. Everything is not going to be easy. Everything is not going to be nice. But God, here I am. I submit myself to you. All I have, Lord, I give it to you, Jesus, all that I have. All that I have, all that I am, all my talents, all my abilities, all my resources, I submit them to you because for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I've got to, I, I will, I will to do your will, oh God. My hands are open, here I am. And that's that's where Paul was. And that's why Paul, in the midst of being in jail, was able to focus on the souls, was for, able to say, you know what? I would rather just go home and be with the Lord. But you know what? That's selfish on my part. I'm going to stay here so that you can grow in your faith, so that you can say we prayed and God delivered. And so that you will know that the God we serve answers prayer. I love this. this the name of this hymn is Living for Jesus by Thomas O. Chisholm. He said, this is just one line of it. I own no other master. My heart shall be thy throne. My life I give henceforth to live, O Christ, for thee alone. It is only with that kind of attitude that we can be like Paul and say to live is Christ. Even in negative circumstances, even in negative circumstances, no matter what's going on with my life, all to Jesus I surrender. You know, we sing that song, but it's not just with salvations, you know, getting saved, but this, my life, we have to surrender all to Christ. Suffering for Jesus is temporary. Pleasure in Jesus is eternal. So no matter what our life brings us, we have got to remember all of this is passing away. That's why let's not run after the things of this life. Let's look to the eternal, the eternal things. And the more we keep our eyes on the eternal, the easier it is for God to be glorified 
in our lives as we go through difficulties. And Paul said, let me make this bigger. I love this one. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. I want y'all to think about that. Paul said, I'm convinced that they don't even compare, that they don't compare. So that's it. That's all I got. But I pray it blessed you. I pray that for those of you that are in difficulty right now, that you would look at this Philippians chapter one. Matter of fact, just read the whole book. We're going to keep going through it. It's so much in there. But then you allow God to regulate your heart and your mind and say, Father, for me to live is Christ. Until you take me home, for me to live is Christ. I open my hands and I give it all to you. My heart is your throne, Lord. Because I'm going to be like Paul. And every, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to whine. I'm going to submit myself to you. I love you that much, Jesus. Thank you so much for being with me. This is, this is um, Sunday School Time with Lady B. Thank you, every new subscriber. Thank you for every comment, everybody that shares. And I pray that I have said something to bless you and to encourage you. And so until next week, again, this is Lady B. This is Sunday School Time. I love you and I'm praying for you. Be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Bye-bye.